the sentimental things, the things that have emotional resonance for us, they are part of our story. Hey folks, it's Carrie from Pretty Neat. Thanks for joining me. If you're new here to my channel, welcome. I share videos here every week about organizing and decluttering your home and adopting a minimalist mindset. So I hope you'll hit the subscribe button and stick around. Today, I wanna to talk about something that I have noticed from working with a lot of people who are getting rid of clutter in their homes. I work as a professional organizer and I work one-on-one -on -one with people often, helping them kind of process their things and make decisions about what to keep and what to get rid of. One of the things that I've noticed in going through this process with a lot of different people is that they often feel the need to tell me the story of their things and that this is kind of a necessary part of making decisions about parting with something. So for example, I've had clients who are parting with kids clothes and they would share with me the events in their life when their child actually wore that. Maybe it was when they brought them home from the hospital or for a special birthday or Mother's Day, Father's Day, that kind of thing. I've had a lot of stories told to me about people's parents or relatives who had passed away and the things that those relatives left to them and what significance those items had to them and to the people who are gone. This has happened to me over and over with all different people and it really got me thinking about what is important about this process of telling the story of our things or maybe acknowledging the importance of our things and how does that play into this process of us being able to get rid of some of those things. So I think this is most applicable to our sentimental items, things that are tied to a certain time in our lives or to certain people who maybe are no longer living. And if you are a person who struggles with parting with sentimental items in particular, this might be something that is useful to you. The fact is our things get infused with a lot of emotional meaning because they serve us at different points in our life. They kind of get attached to different time periods that have gone by. And when we see those things, yes, it's just an object, but it's really about what it symbolizes for us. And certain things might symbolize a particular event, a particular person, or a particular time in your life, and it can make it really challenging to part with those things. So if you are having a tough time parting with sentimental items, here are some ideas about acknowledging how important those things were to you and kind of giving yourself permission to let them go. So first of all, I think it's important to tell the story, maybe you can tell it to another person. Um, if you have someone in your life who can help you with your decluttering efforts, it might help to just talk through, oh, I remember this thing and this is what happened and this is why it was meaningful. You might hire a person like me, a professional organizer. You know, the things don't really mean anything to me and uh, uh, obviously I, um, invested in the well-being of my clients, but you know their life story isn't really attached to mine. So I can easily listen to those stories and I can also say, okay, well, that was important in the past. Does it serve you anymore? And I can kind of add some questions that might prompt them to acknowledge that that thing is no longer useful or no longer needs to be kept. If you don't have a person that you feel that would help you through this process, you could also write the story of your things. This might sound kind of odd to do, but I'm thinking more in terms of like a journaling practice where if you have certain items that you've hung on to for years that are really tied to a certain memory or a certain person and you're struggling with that, maybe write about it. Write the story of that thing talk about why it was important, who it is attached to in your memory, 
And maybe just the process of doing that will kind of allow you to release that thing once you've written the story out, once you've acknowledged how important it was or what significance it had to you. You also might take pictures of the item. That's a way of kind of hanging on to the memory without having to hang on to the actual object. And particularly for larger items like furniture, I find that this can be really helpful. Once you've told the story of that thing, either to another person or in a journal, or even just mentally thinking through the importance of that thing, really acknowledge what it meant. Acknowledge that it did hold particular significance for you or for someone else and give it that recognition mentally. You can then recognize that this particular item served a purpose in a different season of your life. If these are things that had particular significance for you personally, maybe they're remembrances from your college days, or maybe it's a particular hobby or activity that you used to love, give that mental recognition to that thing. It served you in the past. It brought you joy. This reminds me of Marie Kondo's advice about thanking our things for their service. I think this is a similar idea that you are acknowledging that that thing was important to you or was useful and also acknowledging that that time is in the past. This can be really challenging and I think it's part of what makes getting rid of stuff so hard is that by getting rid of things, we have to acknowledge that we have changed or that our life has changed. And sometimes we really miss things from our past. Giving yourself permission to feel those feelings and to recognize that certain things were great in the past, but that they're just not serving us anymore. I think that type of thinking can help with your mindset when you are trying to declutter and part with some things. I'll share this story. I may have shared it in a previous video, but I was a musician. I played an instrument. I actually played the bassoon. I started playing an instrument in fourth grade and I played all through high school. I was very involved with music in high school. And even in college, I was in ensembles and I took private lessons. And being a musician was really a significant part of my life for that whole time period. I stopped playing it after college. I just, I went to graduate school. I didn't really have the time. I wasn't involved in any ensembles anymore. And so I essentially stopped playing after college, but I hung on to that instrument for close to 20 years. And it was so hard for me to part with it. And the reason for that was because parting with my instrument meant I had to acknowledge that I was no longer a musician. And that had been a huge part of my identity for such a long period of time. And I didn't really want to acknowledge that. That made me kind of sad. But I eventually got to the point where I realized that that was a certain season of my life. I'm in a very different place. I own a business. I have so many things that fill my time now. And I had to acknowledge that if I wanted to get back into music, I would most likely do it in some other way or with some other instrument. I, I finally got to that point where I was able to part with my bassoon. That was not easy, but it was freeing, I will admit, to get rid of the bassoon eventually because it was kind of hanging over my head. Every time I would see it in a closet, I would think, oh, I'm not playing that anymore. It was kind of this constant reminder to me about this thing that was really somewhat bittersweet. I will say I have no regrets about eventually getting rid of that instrument. It served me well for such a long time and it brought me a lot of joy being a musician and playing that particular instrument. And so I was finally able to appreciate that for what it was in my past. And also I was able to then sell it, give it to someone who was actually gonna use it. I was happy that it was able to live out its life 
as a bassoon with somebody else who would appreciate it. And I still look back fondly on all of that, but I realized I don't have to have the instrument here to know that that was something I used to do and enjoy and that it's in the past. So what I learned from that experience and what I'm advising here is you have to give yourself permission to move on from things. And this is probably a good life lesson in a lot of different areas, not just in regards to our stuff, but not everything serves us throughout our lifespan. Most of us are going to be on this planet for quite a while. And so we just really cannot keep everything that brought us joy at every period of time. That's not practical. And so what that means is we have to acknowledge and accept the fact that some things serve us for a particular time period and then they don't anymore. The sentimental things, the things that have emotional resonance for us, they are part of our story. And in order to part with those things that no longer serve us, sometimes we just need to tell the story, acknowledge the story, and maybe grieve the story a little bit too. We might have to just feel sad about it, about the fact that, you know, we don't play an instrument anymore or that our kids have grown up or that we don't scuba dive anymore or whatever it is for you. And acknowledging that, acknowledging to yourself that that is kind of sad, but that it's part of the rich tapestry of your life. It's part of everything that has made you the person that you are and that you can get rid of that thing and maybe make space for the next thing that is going to be enriching and bring you joy. So I hope that perspective helped you out a little bit if you're struggling to get rid of sentimental items. If it did, please leave me a thumbs up on this video. It helps me out a lot. And I'm interested to know, do you have particular examples like this in your life? Leave me a comment down below and let me know. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please leave a like. It helps my channel out a lot. And don't forget to subscribe. I share new videos here every week about organizing and decluttering your home and adopting a minimalist mindset. Talk to you soon.